Bristol Farms Poke Bro. Dude, it's highly regarded for a reason, man. Yo. Oh my gosh, look at that huge sign. Do you see that? I did not know Bristol Farms had the Washington Monument size. We are about to spend anywhere from $100 to $200 at Bristol Farms right now. I don't know why we're hyping this up right now, but we are because we've never been here before. And I heard that it competes with Whole Foods. When we were going to Bristol Farms, you dressed like this on purpose. Yeah. You wanted to dress like a Bristol Farms person. This is the same feeling that white people get in Chinatown. <laughs> that tourist energy. One of the Bristol Farms. Is that all we get? Okay. Someone told me that Bristol Farms is a mixture between Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, Harrods. Okay, so we are here at the Hot Bar. They have an array of vegetables here. They do have some Asian-inspired dishes, such as orange chicken. I think we gotta try everything. Oh my gosh, you know I, I actually love corned beef. Oh, let me get a separate thing for the sliced turkey. That turkey looks juicy. Bro. I gotta be honest, I'm pretty excited. Ribs, baby back. I gotta say, the people at Bristol Farms, the workers are pretty nice. No, wow. we'll go far. Like, we'll eat up your food, we'll like, cook for you. You can grab like any steak. Really? Yeah. You'll cook a steak for us, like right now? Yeah, if you wanna. Guys, you thought we spent more than we did at Whole Foods? I thought we were going to. No, we pretty much spent the same amount. 180, almost 200. <laughs> Service was amazing at Bristol Farms, guys. We just got back. Yo, make supermarkets great again. We got the layout here. <laughs> we are going to dive into this food. All right, you guys, today we are reviewing Bristol Farms. Bristol Farms' closest comparison is Whole Foods. Yes, and when you talk to people at Bristol Farms about Whole Foods, they have some opinions. Oh, dope. There's a rivalry. Which one do you like better, Bristol Farms or Whole Foods? Hi, I like Bristol Farms better. Hey. Smaller, closer, and really intimate experience. Bristol gang. David. First off, it was what, it was, a nine, was it 945? 949 at the hot bar at Bristol Farms. Comparing this to Whole Foods, which is 999. I think the first thing that I'm looking at is the corned beef, you know, very European Irish potato family potatoes, baby carrots, and the chicken masala. Chicken masala from the Bristol Farms hot bar. Chicken bar's not bad. Oh my gosh, those mushrooms are great. Let's go into this corned beef. I'm really excited about this one. Not bad. It's really tender. No, I'm, I'm picking out corned beef over the chicken right now. Potatoes and carrots, pretty hearty. I gotta give the marsala a 2.5, and I gotta give the corned beef a three out of five. Oh, I'm giving the corned beef a 3.5 out of five because it wasn't dry. Juicy corned beef, 3.5, I'm rolling with it. Mac and cheese, I, I think that this should be really good. Hot bar mac and cheese. Ooh, I can tell they take the cheese seriously. Yeah, that's sharp. Did you know they had a cheese expert there? Really? You, you know why? You know why I know? Because I talked to her and she helped me procure this truffle gouda raw milk. Run that back, what'd you say? <laughs> she truffle? helped me procure. Milk. David, I believe that she helped, she assisted you in procuring. David put on the wool freaking pea coat just to go to Bristol Farms, man. You were catering. See, I couldn't do that. I had to stay true. Man. We gotta have this truffle gouda. Whoa. That's really good. I've never had cheese like this before. Oh my gosh, yo. They said that this was flown in from France. Orange chicken may be the most Chinese inspired dish that is loved across the world. Not bad, a little bready though. Recently in these grocery store videos, we've had so much what I call whack and cheese. I'm excited. I have very high expectations for this mac and cheese. I want to love it. I do not want to say I love it. That having this one, man, I gotta give this a four out of five. Grilled vegetables, pretty good. Oh, yo, those are good. Man, let me try, let me chop up this uh, baby monster bok choy. I don't know about this bok choy. Mm. You know, at the end of the day, you like what you like. You know, sometimes a lot of people associate certain tastes with higher classness. I'm like, listen, even rich people, they still like McDonald's. I give the mac and cheese four out of five. I give the orange chicken uh, three out of five. It was okay. Everything else, Nah, I'm rolling around a 2, 2.5. I disagree with you. I thought the steamed and roast vegetables, 4 out of 5. I thought the mac and cheese, I'm not going to lie, Andrew. I don't know about I don't know about the taste palette for it. It's better than Whole Foods for sure. What would you think of the fried rice? Whack. Whack. Yeah, the, the, the fried rice and the bok choy get like a two out of five. Yeah. We are cruising through the hot food, guys. I'm pretty excited. We got some different items here. My man's over here is doing his job. I appreciate that, but I wish he wasn't right now. I'm trying to review Bristol Farms over here. Yo, the baby back rib from Bristol Farms. Look at this. I think the eatability is really high. Flavor-wise, it started off strong for me. I got a little bit of that like kind of baked part with the barbecue sauce. Lots of flavor. 
but then it really fell off. You know why I'm giving this a four out of five? Oh, this tastes the most like the ribs that mom makes. Say it's not true. They do taste homemade. Mom made ribs that often? When Ribs were quite good. No, the selection is small though. Selection is small, but the taste is big. Bristol Farms. This is the marinated chicken leg. Does this not look like it came from Europe? This is what they eat sometimes in the medieval movies, like what the king is no, eating. No, Game of Thrones. The White Walkers will come by night, fortify the northern walls. <laughs> <laughs> Jon Snow is king of the north. In tomorrow's battle, we fight not only for ourselves, to the house of Stark! To the house of Stark! This is alright, man. Yo, I had a bite I really liked, but overall, it, was, it got, there were bites that was dry AF. The eating billet. 5 out of 5. Yeah, I was gonna get a 3.5 out of 5. <laughs> you hold know, on. underneath the skin, I was like, yo, that's too pink for hold me. Hold on, hold on, we gotta um examine this. I got a 2.5 out of 5. Guys, we are moving on. Alright, guys, Mexican lasagna. Lots of cheese, onions, sour cream. That's pretty good. It's good. It does not taste like lasagna, though. It tastes more like a fajita. Maui chicken, I've never had chicken with nuts on it. Maui chicken. I don't know about that one. Yeah, chicken is bland. Macadamia nuts are bland. So it's sort of like double bland. Very tacky, I gotta give them a one out of five. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, this Asian flank steak clearly a little bit dried out. Actually not that bad. Let me tell you, my favorite immigrants are the ones that are like Mexican lasagna, the Maui chicken, and the Asian flank steak. Turkey meatball with spinach. Let's go. Let's just say this turkey spinach meatball probably didn't have much ethnic influence to it. I choose the Mexican lasagna. I give that a four out of five. I give the Asian flank steak a three. I give the Maui chicken a one, and I give this turkey meatball a two. Asian flank steak, 3.5. Mexican lasagna, four. Maui chicken, two. Meatball, 1.5. Winner, winner, turkey dinner, man. Let's do this. It. Let's get some mash on We it. end this. Let's eat the mash, man. Eat the mash. Go eat the mash! Come on, man! Yo, I love, I'm so excited about this little burnt turkey skin. Turkey dinner! Oh, it was good. That skin made a big difference. No skin, still kinda good. Turkey got a really good flavor. They do certain things here very good. Man, I would say that was pretty good. That doesn't taste like no Fung family Thanksgiving <laughs> turkey and mashed potatoes. Shout out to Yo. mom and dad, but nah, no, that is like, woo! Okay, I'm gonna bring you food the next time. All right, guys, we got a quick Hawaiian section here, Japanese American section here, guys. We have their poke bar is highly regarded. Salmon sashimi. I don't think Bristol Farms specializes in salmon sashimi. On to the salmon teriyaki. The that is pretty solid. It's solid. The, the key to grilled salmon is really not over grilling it, but the eatability is good. All right, you guys, this poke bar is $14.99 a pound. All right, so we'll, we'll just try, uh, right. no, this is called uh, Maui tuna. It's really good. Yeah, their poke is good. Okay. Okay. Okay, now we got the mayonnaise shrimp. Not as good. Shrimp was cool though, nice and bouncy. I actually appreciate Spicy it. Spicy salmon. Spicy salmon. Salmon, this is way better than the salmon that we just had. Yeah. Man. And last but not least, the number one option, spicy tuna. Bristol Farms poke, bro. Dude, it's highly regarded for a reason, man. It's actually really good. <coughs> I have to give this a 4.5 out of 5 oh my and gosh. say that that is better than a lot of poke spots. Pretty good. Poke, I give it a four out of five. We are officially moving out of the hot section and into the cold deli section. All right, got we just trying the kimchi. Better right. than anything in Boston. For sure. They got lobster rolls like us. They ain't gonna have a good old Irish pub like McDowell's, okay? okay? Mark Wahlberg would I like to have a word with you, Justin. Yeah. Hey, Justin, yeah, you like that? You think, you think it's better than Boston, huh? You think kimchi is better out here? We don't eat kimchi in Boston. Broccoli salad. I felt like it tasted much healthier. felt the heaviness of the cream. Weight. I will tell you this, man. I'm looking at this Chinese coleslaw, and you know what I like to see? Scallions. No, no, you like the chong. Whoa. Mm. I've never had that before. Mm. I thought it was pretty good. I thought the cabbage pieces were really thin. There's this presence of like this other. Oriental noodles. Yeah, I knew it. Noodle salad. Oh, <laughs> you get that. <laughs> rain, 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 go, go away. away. Let the sun come out. And all the children say it. Lemon pasta with chicken. Yeah. Sorry. I got no flavor, bro. Surprising. Actually, I actually like the pesto. Yeah, the pesto is the best. And out of the five supermarkets we had, that's the best. Pesto, pesto. pasta. That's the best though. The best though. Hello everyone, welcome to Besto Pesto. All right, straight up, mac salad, wax salad, lemon pasta with chicken, and no, no flavor. With lemon pasta with chicken, like a one out of five. I'm gonna give this a two out of five. I'm gonna give this a 3.5 out of five. Oh. All right, guys. We're in the middle of a rainstorm, but we're gonna keep filming. Stepping over puddles in my ball main. 
They got the marinated artichokes in the rain. Mm, that's a good one. Woo. That's a lot. Bite right. to it. Guys, these are beets. Beets by Bristol. I like them. We have chicken salad, tuna salad. Let's go. Yo, Andrew, you know why we're pushing forward with this episode? Because I dressed up for it. So tuna salad, I would say... It tasted different. Yeah, it I'm not a huge fan of that tuna, tuna salad. Tuna salad was a little heavy. I like it. Yeah? I give it a four out of five. Wow. I give that a three out of five. I give the tuna a three out of five. So we have the egg salad and potato salad here. Let's do the egg salad. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, that was high quality. I love egg and green onion. I think it's a perfect pairing. Match made in heaven. Also great on a rainy day outside in the rain. Rain, 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 go away. Let the sun come out. Whoa, the potato flavor was very pure, very strong. I give both of those a 3.5 out of 5. We're coming up in the dessert section and sort of like, Anna, this is dessert, but it's not dessert like, like Nelson did to the squad. Is it coming? Yo, tell Nelson we gotta get this done before we drown out here. We are drowning. I'm drowning. I'm drowning. Get a fork ready for Nelson. Y'all crazy, y'all crazy, y'all crazy. Crazy. Successful here, let's go. Nelson finally made it. Yeah. yeah. Yo, I'm going for the banana cream pie. That wow. is my selection. I'm definitely going after this strawberry chantilly. Oh, I yeah, got the no. salted caramel cheesecake. Y'all know I always do the cheesecake. Banana cream, let's go. That's good. Yo, I don't know what Chantilly is, but that is one of my new favorite cakes. All right. Mm. Oh, banana cream. Mm. Strawberry Chantilly cake. Let's get it. You gotta get a big, big scoop. Yo, let's get it. That's, that cream pie is great. All right, I'm going in for the tiramisu. Shark carrot cheesecake. David, how was the tiramisu? A little creamy, but but strong. Parrot cheesecake right here. Not bad, a little thick. Oh, okay, so we all agree the cheesecake Wacko. go. Turn me was the okay. This came in at a consistent two or three. Definitely get the banana, the banana pie. Definitely get the banana cream pie. David, final takeaways of Bristol Farms. All right, Bristol Farms was fascinating. Is this the most flavorful food in the world? No, not necessarily. Did they do some things really well? Yes. And will I be back again? Probably. That's a, it's that's, a different environment. That's in a there high standard. There, right? Yeah, that's a high standard for food. It would have rem reminded me of a of like a higher end bookstore mixed with a supermarket. Is Bristolization a synonym? for success in America. I think at one point for our parents, that was the only model of that they had, was to try to become the macadamia nut chicken breast. It definitely gave me a lot of thoughts about like where America's changing and, and wouldn't you agree with me, and I'm sure you guys watching at home agree with me, there's a lot of strife in America right now. Yeah. There's a lot of conflict. I respect Bristol Farms, and I respect anybody who goes to Bristol Farms in terms of their food choices. But I don't think that it's something that we can say that everybody has to buy into anymore. And I think at one point it was. It definitely does spark a lot of thoughts. It sparks thoughts. Sparks Let's just leave it thoughts. at that. <laughs> All right, guys, everybody in the comments below, let us know what other supermarkets or grocery stores you would like us to check out. I know I'm seeing those comments, guys. Keep leaving them so that we can pinpoint which one we're going to hit up. And also, guys, let us know how Bristolized are you. This is a question even if you're an immigrant or not. Until next time, we out. Peace. Peace. Ah. Yo, what's going on everybody? Thank you so much for watching that video and thank you for watching a lot of other videos and thank you for subscribing because David, we have just reached two million subscribers. Two Woo! million. Woo! Woo! And we have to give a huge, gigantic shout out to our biggest sponsor of all time for whom without them, this none of this would be possible. I gotta give a shout out to our sponsor. You guys. Oh. No, seriously, you guys have been the sponsor of our entire channel. I mean, you know, we have other sponsors, but you guys have been watching the videos and subscribing, and it's not all about subscriptions. Obviously, it's about engagement, it's about the people you touch, it's about the comments, the ups and downs, and everything. I mean, you guys just meeting you guys in person and connecting with you guys, that's what it's really about. I think it's so rare for people to be able to touch the lives of people that they don't physically meet. You know, open somebody's eyes or educate somebody or just give somebody something funny for, you know, in a way that they enjoyed or was accessible to them. Um, two million people around the world at least know who Fun Bros are or like a video enough to have subscribed. It, it just means so much. And you guys, we are gonna keep going. 
We got a, a lot of cool stuff coming up. We got a memberships channel right now. Please click join if you guys want some exclusive podcasts, exclusive material. Uh, just check it out. And also turn on your notifications because we got new videos coming out. For seven years, we've been making videos consistently. So we have some new formats coming. We're gonna bring back vlogging. And I will say this, closing up, because I don't want to talk too long. But one thing and one goal that we have that we're gonna accomplish in the next few months is to be more personal with you guys. And we are gonna share more about our lives and our thoughts. I gotta give a huge shout out to Nelson Chan from Hubalad. We got too many people to thank, okay. man. I don't even gotta thank Richie, all the directors. There's Richie, Tim, all those guys. Uh, Nelson, uh, uh, Will Smith, Vince Carter. To keep you all right guys, thank you for everything. And until next time, we out. Peace.